This is a revision video for 7C, the skeleton. So to start with, why do we have a skeleton? There are several reasons. You can see them listed here. The skeleton allows movement. It protects our internal organs, provides support, stores minerals like calcium, and also makes new blood cells. Now, it's really important that you know those functions of the skeleton. But how does the skeleton actually do all of these things? Well, it's to do with the properties of bones. Now, you don't need to know the information on the left hand side here. If you can remember it, that's fantastic. Um, but this is quite detailed here. But it's worth linking these to what bones do. So it says here um, they have a hollow tube shape inside. That makes bones really light for movement, makes it easy for us to move around. They're difficult to stretch or bend and they contain collagen, which is a protein that prevents bone being brittle and are hardened by calcium and are difficult to compress. Now they have kind of several of the same functions, which is to make bone strong so it can support us upright. It helps to avoid breakages and it makes it strong to protect our organs as well. Okay, now the other thing that bone can do is it has some cells called osteoblasts. Now that can make new bone when bone is damaged. Some people think that bone is not living and that's incorrect. Bone is living. It's able to grow and repair itself if you fracture it. And it's these special cells called osteoblasts that do that. Now, lastly, and really importantly, bone also contains within that hollow space something called bone marrow. And that makes new blood cells. You'll learn more about new blood cells later on in the course, but red blood cells carry oxygen and white blood cells uh, stop infectious diseases and making new ones of those is really important. So as we said, some parts of the skeleton protect your internal organs. Some bits are obvious like the skull um, protecting the brain. The backbone can protects some soft tissue called spine, the spinal cord, which is made up of nerves. So that's really important to protect. The rib cage protects the lungs and heart and the pelvis protects the reproductive organs, the bladder and the intestines. So those are the parts that are important for protecting internal organs. But there are several parts that are also important for movement. Now, you don't need to know the names of these for this course. It's helpful if you do. But one thing you do need to understand is how these bones work together to ensure that movement can be the case. So we need to have a little bit of a look at the joints between these bones to understand that. Now, there are three types of joint you need to be aware of. Hinge joints, they allow movement forward and backwards. So your knees and elbows are example of, examples of hinge joints. Ball and socket joints, they allow uh, more movement than that. Uh, they allow movement in most directions and they're the hip and the shoulder. Now, the one that you might not have heard of before you did the course was fixed joints. The skull is an example of a fixed joint. The skull is actually made initially of 22 different bones that fix together shortly after birth, and they then allow no further movement. Now, you need to know a little bit about how joints work. And so there's a label diagram here, and you need to learn these labels. So you can see the bone at the top and the bottom. Now, the bone is lubricated by cartilage, which you can see is a covering on the end of each of the bones. It's a slippy material, and that works with something called synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is kept inside the joint by a membrane called the synovial membrane. And it's a little bit like oil, putting oil on a, a bike, for example, on the moving parts. So the slippy cartilage and the synovial fluid together make movement very smooth and make sure there's very limited friction. Now, in order for that joint to be held um, and to stop injuries from ha happening, you have ligaments that hold the two bones together. They provide support and really give structure to that joint. Now, uh, ligaments can sometimes be damaged um, uh, in sporting injuries and so on and so forth, as can things called tendons. Now, the job of a tendon is to attach the muscle to the bone, and that therefore allows movement when the muscles contract. Now, if you need any more help with this, you need to go to page 46 and 47 of the textbook. But hopefully that's been a useful quick run through the skeleton.